We're here with uh, legendary Elliot. Elliot's been waiting for this moment all year. Elliot, all year. Fix, fix your hair. Fix your hair. <coughs> Feel good. <laughs> Elliot, uh, can you tell these people what they need to do for the uh, the YouTube channel? What's the, what's the steps that they need to take? Yeah, they, you gotta you gotta. I think number one is subscribe. Number two is you gotta like. Like it. And then number three is you gotta share with all your friends, everyone that you know. Everybody you know. If you have extra time, check the video description. You go on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, everywhere. This is Elliot, Happy Bill Project. Like, share, subscribe. Was we had worked a bunch of different patterns. And I'll just go really, really quick recap. This person is bottled up on you like this, right? And they're just trying to survive and you're trying to score. You're trying to submit them, okay? So I told you, and this is how we left off, because there's some faces I hadn't seen before. We're in this cross-body pin right here, and we're like this. And I'm going, man, I'm going to press this action, right? So I told you to grab onto this elbow, because two things could happen. Potentially, I could bring my hand on this side, bring them up off this elbow line, open this pocket, and come in here. Not bad. I could do that, potentially. But it's hard to bring them up this way, OK? And I don't mind him coming up. I just want to press the action. This way is harder than that way. Okay, I know you think because you're over here, but the one thing I have going that way, I got this free leg over here that can drop, drop on that jaw at any time. And you're going to turn. You have no issue. I mean, a, it can be a big strength disparity, and you can still get him this way. Because I went on a side control pin, and all I do is bring this hand here. And now I bring myself up to grab this, and I'm sitting here like this. And you're going, well, it seems like you don't really have great control. I can bury my head and get rid of these legs in two seconds, okay? And if worst case scenario, he did come this way, I could just grab this elbow really quick. I mean, there's like the amount of time that he, you basically had to fall asleep to not catch this elbow coming this way. Also, I'm so close to him, and I'm just telling you scenarios so you understand this larger story. If for some reason he comes this way, and I was like, the, who cares? So I just step over and he keeps coming and I'm going, okay, I'll just spin to this side on you. Who cares? Like, so what does it matter that he comes this way? It's all right. Remember what he was. He was a staller, okay? He doesn't want to get scored on, okay? Or I'm yelling 30 seconds, 40 seconds, whatever. And he's like, oh, I, I didn't get submitted. Awesome. Well, you should have turned anyway, dude. Because in a real fight, this, you would have just been killed right now. This would just be awful. Like uh, raining down elbows and kneecaps and forget about it. So you should be able to turn. But we're saying no. Okay? So I grabbed on here. I brought this shin line up. And this is the grip I had. And now he's turning. And I told you in the last turns when he landed, you were going to open up this pocket. But when you make him turn like this, he's going to, and especially in the worlds, he's going to turn. And the man that's on that podium at the end will turn. And now he's coming up to turtle. And you're going, boof, okay? I don't want you for the worlds to sit in this quadrant right now. It's your opportunity to get your hooks in on the bottom, okay? So when you are on this grip, you're like this with this grip. And I force this issue by jamming this on your throat line, jamming it. What I really want is the, is, the, is the shin blade to go right on the jaw line and drive it. And that's what's going to make him buck up. These are really weak muscles. I have a lot of leverage in the angle I'm at. When he comes up like this, we're going to say he over-rotates. And now I'm losing everything. And in the last class, stay right there. In the last class, I told you, this grip he's not peeling. And I don't mind if he peels it. Because if he peels my grip, that meant he opened up this pocket. So one played for me. I'll, cha I'll let you take the grip. But then that means this opened up. Okay? But I'm saying he's a good player. And he's bottled up. And he knows I'm about to pass you or mount you or something. So we're going to play the story. I'm telling you the whole story so you know what you're playing. You're like this. And now you're driving this down. You just dropped this shin. And now he's coming up. And what happens is you lose this elbow line. And now I only had this. And this is how I played in the last class. You lose this elbow line, and he keeps going. And I told you to bring yourself back and go in this weird, unathletic position for a reason. Because I yanked back and leveraged myself so deep I, on this side, and that just so that everybody understands the story, who the hell cares if I lose this hand? Because that's the angle we're going to play in a second. So I'm here, and I told you I would love to hang off this side, lift this elbow off of this grab, and just get in super deep. Because now I really have a good grip.
Okay, and then what I told you was that we were either going to transfer. Either we were going to come up and now transfer our legs and see even the other way to step over. That's what we were playing the other day. And we went to a whole bunch of different combos on submissions and stuff. But I want to take it so we go to the back, okay? So we started from the beginning. I went like this. I was in side control. Went to the elbow. I pushed this down. I dropped this. And now eighth is coming up. This hand isn't going to yank back. Okay, so as eighth is coming back on the drop, this hand is just going to base, and I'm going to ask you to plant your feet in one shot. When eighth and comes up the turtle, off this back hand, my, hand, my feet go right in there. So either one, I'm fine with you landing like this, throwing this hip in first, then your secondary on this one. Okay, I'm fine with you driving back and catching the ankle, the one that we were doing earlier. So I'm like this, I'm here. He becomes a turtle, I base, I transfer, I grab, I pull, I kick, and I take over, right? Come back again. I'm also fine with you, and not everybody does it because some people have flexibility issues. Bridget does it really well if you want to see her do it. She did it in the finals at the ADCC thing. Um, you're like this, and you're driving it. And now, as he's we'll go slow. As he's coming up and I'm basing, I'm taking this leg as my first insertion. And now I'm here coming back up and throwing this as my second insertion, right? So I'm fine with you doing any one of the three. After we've done all three for a bit, we'll go to the necklines and then break them down to a quadrant. So the opportunity to score is really high on that turn. All started with you going, I'm going to press this action like you don't understand because I don't care if you turn in, I don't care if you turn away, I am not losing dominant position at any point. I'm just gonna keep transferring from quadrant to quadrant to quadrant, right? So let's partner up, let's do it. Thank you, sir. They were like this, and you're trying to submit them or mount them. I would have loved to have mounted if this was down, and that's really what you should have done. Because if I have control of an elbow on the far side, and control of his head, as long as he's not too big a man where I go, okay, I don't know you. I don't know if you've ever wrestled before. I don't know how high you bridge. Like, I don't, I'm not, maybe I don't feel comfortable. Or the weight disparity is too big that I go, well, I don't want to mount you. If you're so much bigger and stronger, I may not be able to get the arm up. There's a lot of reads within that that you're processing and determining which way to go. This is very safe. This can happen at any point. Like, really, what am I doing if this man was so big? But... I would have loved to have mounted if I could, but he's smart. He should have been like this anyway. And the, everything that he's doing, and if you're inside, you should have this leg up because this is your knee elbow recovery leg. This is your shrimping leg. At no point was this your shrimping leg. It never should have been. You shouldn't have been pushing off of this to begin with. This is your toe line. You're separating your hips as far that way as possible. Shrimp with that toe, right? That's exactly, and this is like up here. And that's so, you should have been like this anyway. Okay, so I told you that you were here and you're trying to figure out whether you're gonna mount attack. I'm really tight on him driving in, so in case he comes this way, it's easy for me to take his neck. I slow him down, it's easy for me to pay. So I'm really connected to him, right? So it doesn't matter if he comes in. So now I go vertical and I had the elbow and I had the wrist. And I told you you're gonna pick this leg up and, and you're gonna drive it to the mat. And as he turned, I didn't let go of this. Okay, I would have loved to have taken this and taken this arm, but there's nothing there, right? So he's not fiddling and trying to get rid of this rip because we said if he grabbed, grab with this guy, if he's grabbing, I'll just open it up and now I got this arm, okay? But he's not doing that. He's bottled up, he's playing super tight on me. And I'll go, okay, I can't get any penetration on either one. And then I told you, you were on this wrist anyway from the beginning, this is how we were, right? Protect this hand on top and give me this wrist because this is how we were in the beginning okay so i'm like this and then i told you he starts over rotating and so i go okay so i start hanging off of here because i'm losing the bottom elbow so i wanted to hang and lift because i really wanted to shove this hand as deep as possible and now i really got that elbow now i can control the game a lot of different ways but when we said that and we lost both and as you're losing both, I see some people taking this hand, and as Ethan wrote it, they base this hand out here. 
I don't want this hand to ever leave the center pocket. Even when we go back to the back take and the knee line penetrated first, the principle was to have presence within this body line, whether it's the center or up here is to have physical presence. So the back of my tricep on this, if I did nothing else, and I asked Ethan to do and keep going, keep, I lost everything, keep going the turtle, right? I didn't do anything else but connect to this, and he did everything. Okay, so I'm asking you, don't take that hand and base it over there. Because later on, and now we'll go a little bit further, later on I've lost everything, right? And he's coming up, and I'm going, okay. So I base his back hand, and as I flip my hips, and now either I get this first insertion, Remember the hand that was in here? That hand has fingertip grips on top. So my, it's very easy for me to slide this up, connect these fingers on a quarter Nelson, and then hang off the side and blade this quarter Nelson uh, with a coordinator living at this one at the ADCC, in the last ADCC. When you hang on this one, okay, I know this guy is gonna do everything possible not to let this hook in. Okay, and you're sitting in this weird position. I would have left for you to come up, but let's say it doesn't happen. You're hanging over, and this guy's not going over. I'm going to ask you to do two things at this point. I'm going to ask you, if you can, to control his calf on the far side, because I want to affect how his lower half is. This limb is going to start pushing him out to slide up, and now I have really good open pocket in here to throw in. So now I've just slid up off this quarter Nelson. As soon as I get up here, I'm not going to throw that hook in. I'm going to start reestablishing my position behind on the shoulder line to throw my secondary hook in and now grab onto my wrist right. Let's go back a second. Right? So this hand never leave this pocket. You have positioning here. If you understood from the very beginning, I was here and here, I dropped the line. I hung off over the side because I lost the elbow. I always had the wrist. If you want to meddle with the hand, on, if you want to meddle with my grip on your wrist, that meant this exposed, so I should have taken this. But we said no. We said, hey, I lost both. And as he's coming up, I'm basing. I've never let position go on this inside pocket. I'm basing here, and I'm making one transfer. So as soon as this hand bases, I'm switching my hips in one shot. So my hips should just jump. Come, come in. My hips should just jump to this back quadrant. I told you this is a harder lace on the first one. This is an easier lace. Now what's going to happen, the moment you sit here, and this is what a lot of people will do on me, is this, this guy's going to sit back on his hip, and now you're like this. And you're going, damn, I was so close, okay? I'm going to ask you when he sits back on the hip to go the other way, okay? You're like this, right? And you just made this transfer to this back quadrant, and you're trying, and he sits back on the hip. I don't want to follow him. All we're going to end up is in a silly Z guard. He's going to be pushing me away. And you're like this, thinking you almost passed. I wish I could name out a few people right now, but I'm going to keep my mouth shut, OK? So you're like this. And now they come up. And I did everything the same. I flip, and he sits back on the hip. Instead of going this way, my knee was here. I'm like this. As he sits back, I go back. And now I'm going to look for that bottom elbow again. I've caught the bottom elbow. And on that side, people can't see it. I caught the bottom elbow again like this. I'm going to ask you not to get up. I'm going to ask you to slide your thigh and just clear his head on this side. So as I'm driving, there's a reason I just want to, some people won't do it. He wants to turn again. So if preferably, if I can put my head and my forehead at this hip, I will have enough time, and I can slow the process of him coming back. Worst case scenario, we can go to north-south and start attacking this quadrant. So if he were to come up, it's easy for me to just slide myself up and attack here. But we're going to try to capture first before we slide up. So when I landed here, I would love for you to bury the head right here at the hip because I want to look at this elbow. It's easy for me to end up in the north-south at any point. But I caught the elbow. So what I said before was let's just slide the thigh and clear the head so I'm sitting here like this driving in all I'm doing is taking this leg that I'm slamming on the mat and I'm just gonna slide it to the back of the skull and now I'm gonna look again for this arm because if I lose both I'm right back the other way because I went on the hunt Ethan turns up same position 
and now I'm back in the flip. I just went from this hip, hip, and I went through all the full circle. That's when I tell people, you got to stay dominant. You're in a dominant position. You should not lose your man. If you know your patterns and your sequences, this guy should be forever trying to recover. Maybe I don't submit him. We'll, we'll fight the fight for a long time. But if I understand how he moves, that's why those guys don't get away from Gordon. He understands every move. The young, young man's super intelligent. Uh, he understands every movement. So he goes to the patterns. You see, he doesn't move at elite speed. He knows, he knows the patterns. So the moment the pattern happens, he reacts to the pattern. So I want you to react to the pattern. When he sits back on the hip, go the other way. Okay? Have that focus now. Don't go into a fight. I know you feel like you want to go strength for strength. I want to go strength for strength. I want to let you do what you want to do, and I'm going to come in at a different angle. Okay? So he came up on the turtle. I come up to follow. I'm hooking. He backsteps. I backstep also. I drop my head at that hip line because I want to fight to make sure he doesn't come up too quick. I shelve the elbow line, and this is where I am. I'm understanding what he wants to do. There's a reason I'm driving these hips because I want to push off this back leg push at this hip with my skull so I stop the rotation. Bottom leg does not do this. I don't drive A to B, meaning I don't take this leg and do this and lift my hips up in the air. I want to be connected to you as Velcro. I take this back leg, I'm connected, I slide it out to this side. So I'm perfectly set to spin this back kneecap if I lose anything on this side, so I never lose dominant position at all. I'm on my shelf, I take my secondary hand and I start lacing it underneath. I'll let you do into a Kimura, or I'll let you transfer to that back side. It's the same pattern repeated on the other side. Let's point up and do it. Turn it the other way so it goes. Um, you like this. Yeah. I'm like this. My head is here. I, I told you before, we're Velcro together. Everything we do, we do together, and we're always touching, okay? And now, Ethan, just paint things in my head. There was never a disconnection. I'm mirroring the spine, trying to see if I can get. So I'm not playing a game like this. Because then in case he rolls, there's this gap between us. Am I going head first over there? And potentially he grabs onto my hand. Jason Perez, you're going flying, man. He's going to throw you into the other room. You're like this, right? And now Ethan backsteps on this. So my head is just one shot. It's one shot. So as we go faster on it, I'm like this. And I'm there. He goes fast. And my head's just dropping and driving. Because now I have this hand to start scooping. This hand is here right now because if I can get this scoop, he might pull back on me. So I don't want this hand over here. I want it wedged tight because if I can get this elbow, I have this elbow, I have this frame behind him in case he pulls back, and now I slide this leg out and I throw him into a knee pinch, and now I have a lot of collection here. There's a lot of accumulation of grip here. I have this elbow, I have a wedge here, and I've squeezed my kneecaps together on a knee pinch. And now I'm trying to see what we play out with this arm because now the game goes so slow in his movements because he's gripped so tight that even if I lose anything, I can watch the patterns and see what openings open up. One thing on this, when you're here and you've cleared this leg over to this side, you're like this, and you go into your knee pinch, at some point you've got to drop grips. Right? They've got to make progressions. Two is what I wanted. I wanted a primary and a secondary. So I wanted a double. It's the principle we always play, that we never have not, we always have a backup. Right? So we're like this. As soon as I clear this skull like this, I'm like this, and as soon as I clear the skull, this hand should be coming over. That's my ticket to know my hand should be on this side. I wasn't looking to hold you and pin you in this way, because there's no points to this, and there's, it's impossible for me to even hit you if we we're literally fighting. Right? It's like, you're stuck between my women, I'm going like, to punch you in the stomach? Like, this isn't going to go too well if it was a real fight. I'm like this, and this hand came over at this point. This hand's coming over now because I want to see if I can grab this. Okay, I want to see if I can re-grab this and start the patterns again. So the only thing I'm asking is that in the super minor details, if you can just capture it, I'm only going to ask you to do it a few times. I don't believe that a person most times... If they, don't, if they don't do the pattern, I've seen it for too many years. If they don't do the pattern and physically do it, it's almost impossible to get it retained deeper in the memory. And then when you leave here, if you haven't collected, I've been there, where you go, and now a day later, you're trying to reflect on them, and your patterns are all off. This hand caught before this hand, and this hand, and then you're missing two. And then you come to me and you go, hey, I wanted to go over the move. I go, show me the move. And he's been there. And the two of us will go, what movie are you showing us? He's like, the one from yesterday. I go, he knows. And they're like, 
We didn't do that yesterday. And somehow that telephone game is being reinvented in their mind that what they're showing us is like, this is nothing. The two of us usually go, we look at each other and go, because we usually do the privates together and we go, that's not what we showed. So the reason I say is that we could just do it maybe five, six times. Remember the patterns that I told you, very specific. Okay, what I grabbed, when I grabbed, how I grabbed, and how I transferred. Very specific. So let's just do it. I'll give you about five minutes. Just try to be really detailed so that you try to later on, if you can write stuff down, you'll remember it and grasp it. Let's do it, guys. I'll be there for you. Go to turtle for a second. Meaning this, I'm like this. And now they back step. I don't want to jump like this. I really wanted this side control. I, like the opportunity to grab up here is so easy. I wanted the elbow. This is always going to be there for you. It's almost like when I tell you about false gripping the position, you can always retract backwards, but to go forward on the grips on the full script is almost impossible. I'm like this, and I'm like this near at him, and he backs that. I'm here side control. Because what, like at any point, like why would I want to jump north-south on this now? When I have an opportunity, what I really wanted was that elbow. Because if I can grab onto this elbow, I could go into guillotines, I could go into Darces, and so many other positions. But I didn't want to go here. Because this will always be here. Let's say I miss everything, and Ethan comes to turtle. I just take this leg out. That's all. Like, why? Don't take the opportunity. Don't jump this way. When he back steps, I want to go into side control because I want to re-grab that elbow to hunt. And then I could take this all the way back again, all the way back again, mirrored to the other side. So when you're falling back that way, stay tight on those hips, okay? Uh, you want to grab water, mouth guard, caffeine, anything you want, we rock in two. Forget going happy pill. Those videos were nonstop on how we get behind here, how we insert, how we recover, hip flips, everything. So you should be really kind of coordinated if you read long. If you haven't, if I see all messed up, I'll be yelling at you. You don't watch the happy pill. Okay, guys, so let's do it.